Welcome to the Fantasy Thinker. I'm Jared Kordamich, and I have just recently finished P.L. Stewart's A Drown Kingdom. And uh, I've got to say, what a ride. <laughs> uh, this is a story of um, a kingdom called Atlantics that is destroyed by some sort of disaster that we are not quite sure where it came from, whether natural or divine. Um, and, and the destruction of our main character's homeland is right in the prologue, so I'm not, like, spoiling anything there. Um, and obviously the name Atlantics is kind of a you know, derivative of Atlantis, you know, um, and it has that feel. Uh, but this is a world that Stuart has created uh for, for as his own fantasy world, it's not Earth, and as far as I can tell, it's it's quite a, its own unique universe and stuff like that. Um, and so that was pretty pretty cool uh, because I liked how um, he didn't have to tie it into any kind of you know Earth's history or whatever. He made his own he made his own uh, unique universe that's really really cool to read about. Um, and the story itself follows the survivors of this apocalyptic apocalyptic yeah apocalyptic end to a kingdom and more specifically the the prince now suddenly in charge of his people and this whole book is told in the first person from prince othran's perspective i think it's othran yeah othran othran um and admittedly this really threw me off at first um i hadn't uh, read a first person novel in quite quite a while and uh um and so but and it wasn't just that it wasn't just the the first person perspective it was what really threw me off at first is that i, I found that the character of prince Othrun um quite repetitive in his you know his uh, mental meanderings i guess um, but also he was generally disagreeable sometimes. Um, he was closed minded, he was bigoted. Uh, and then, uh, and so you're, you know, I'm reading this and I'm like, oh, geez, you know, I really don't agree with this guy all the time. But then I began to realize that this was all part of Stuart's design. And, you know, you start to get to know more about this guy and, and, uh, you realize that he's still a young man. Uh, I would guess 20s, but he really doesn't say, but I would just guess that. And uh, he's grown up in a place where he was very privileged. And his viewpoints, uh, the tunnel vision of someone who grew up in such a manner, his um, repetitive pondering of events and the actions of the characters around him, uh, you know, the result of a young man attempting to mentally process a catastrophic collapse of his world so once i got over my own bias against his faults the process became endearing in a way and uh my dislike of his personal quirks uh was worn down to a grudging respect and then an eventual admiration of um what he accomplishes so that was really cool. My, like my admiration of, of how Stuart accomplished this mental turnaround in the reader really knows no bounds. I, I was, I was really floored by how he did that because I've, I've never read a first person narrative with such a flawed character uh, where you end up liking him. And the, uh, you know, you've seen this plenty in like, you've seen this plenty of times in like third person viewpoint narratives uh, but but not not in this manner the way Stuart does it. Um, I mean, literally, the this prince, Othran, really he he wanted to rewrite history books to reflect a false narrative. I mean, yuck, that's like anathema to me, a super history nerd, you know. <laughs> uh, so, um, but uh, you know, it, like I said, it over time it became endearing and. Uh, I really liked it how Stuart just just made me eventually end up caring about this character um, and uh, what was going to happen to him. Um, there is um, some early parts of the book that uh, where Prince Othrun dumps some info on us 
um, a lot of exposition there. Uh, and that's basically to prepare us for his mental reasoning later on in the book. Um, so, the, you know, that part was like, okay, we're getting a lot of information here and not much is actually happening. It is a long boat ride they go on. So it kind of makes sense. Um, but the, the second half of the book though, it, it is just this exciting foray into new places and very interesting situations that really like kept me on the edge of my seat. Um, there was some great action, uh, a few subverted expectations that I had. I was like, Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting that. And, um, and the ending of this book leads us right into the next book. And yeah, I, I was actually a little bit miffed at the ending because I just, uh, I wanted more and, uh, and it wasn't there. And now I got to go get the next book. (laughs) And so, um, I think that if you end up picking this book up, uh, this exciting first volume in Drowned Kingdom Saga, you will have no choice but to go out, you know, for yourself and get the next one because um, I'm uh, really teetering on the edge of not grabbing the next one right away, Uh, you know, because I have other stuff to read, but, you know, this was good enough that I just wanted, I wanted more and I wanted it now. <laughs> so, uh, that's my, um, short review of a drowned kingdom by PL Stewart. Um, so if you, uh, want that kind of excitement at the end of your, your books, then you definitely want to pick this up. And with that, please like, and subscribe and be good to each other. Thank you. <laughs>